Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I'm back with another subscriber requested video. So I was recently asked to do a video about nostalgic perfumes, and I have so many here, so I am going to have to go through each perfume quite quickly. These are my most favorite kinds of videos to make. I love talking about the fragrances throughout my life that have had such a huge impact on me, that are still around, that I still have in my collection, and that are so nostalgic for me. They literally, there's so much scent memory attached to each one of these fragrances. Um, there have been so many fragrances throughout my life because I have been a lifelong perfume lover. I mean, since I was a little, little kid. So it is hard for me to fit these all in and I'm sure there are a million that I'm forgetting, but I do have a ton here and I'm gonna jump right in. So the first one that I'm gonna talk about and the earliest perfume memory that I have in my life is Dior Poison. My mom started wearing this when I was, I wanna say I was about three years old when my mom started wearing this one. Yeah, cause she started wearing this the year this came out. I was three or four because I remember we were living in, my dad was building our house and we were living in like a mobile home on our property while my dad built our house. And my mom had, they had like a walk-in closet and my mom had this big jewelry box on her floor and she kept all of her perfume down there. I think just like on top of her jewelry box. And I remember getting in her closet and all her dresses were hanging. It was the early 80s. So, you know, she still wore all these like long flowy 70s style dresses and I would get under all of these dresses and she had these amazing like leather boots, like leather knee high boots that my dad would buy her, you know, the kind of slouchy boots, like 70s, 80s style with the chunky heels. And I mean, it's such a vibe if you guys are like Gen X like I am and have memories of that. Like it's such a vibe. But anyways, um, sh I would get into her closet and her closet was carpeted too. Like I'll just never forget these memories. And I would just get her poison and I would spray it on. Um, it was my favorite thing in the entire world. It was the most comforting and still is scent I had ever smelled in my life. I remember as a little tiny kid thinking that this smelled like grape juice and this is the exact bottle she had too. Like this isn't her bottle. I wish to, <laughs> I wish to God I had her original bottle. Um, but this is very, very similar to what she had. She had a big, huge bottle just like this. I'm pretty sure it was the Eau de Toilette that she had. Um, and this is a bottle from 1986 and it still smells immaculate. It's a testament to the quality or how high quality fragrances used to be back then. They just don't make perfumes like this anymore. Um, I'm interested to see over like the next 20 years or so, which ones of, which bottles of my like newer perfumes, um, you know, my more modern perfumes are gonna stand the test of time. I'm super interested. But this fragrance, and this is probably the one that I'm going to talk about the longest because it has had the biggest impact on me. This is what started my love for fragrance right here. I still adore this. It's one of my most favorite perfumes in the entire world because it reminds me of my mom and it reminds me of being a tiny little kid getting into her closet and spraying this on me thinking it smelled like grape juice. And I, I feel like the liquid was even purple. I I don't know, yeah, I feel like the liquid is even purple on this and like I really thought I was spraying on grape juice. It's just amazing, it's such an amazing scent. It's such an iconic, just incredible scent. So that is Christian Dior Poison, the most nostalgic smell on the planet for me. She also had Tender Poison. She didn't wear this one quite as much. Um, this is such an amazing perfume too though. Oh my gosh. This is phenomenal. It's so good. It doesn't really have anything to do with the original poison, but it's so good. And yeah, she wore this one too. She just didn't wear it quite as much as the original poison. This was like her go-to, um, but she bought this and loved it too. And this one, this one is nostalgic for me. I definitely get the same kind of feels from this as I do the original, but just not quite as much because it's not quite as iconic, I think, as the original Poison. 
but yeah, I absolutely adore Tender Poison. I still wear this to this day. I still absolutely adore it, and I think it is a phenomenal fragrance. Um, next, I, I keep a little mini of the original Opium. My mom also wore the original Opium. So these are all the perfumes that are, <laughs> that are nostalgic to me because these are perfumes my mom wore when I was too young to wear perfume. Um, I was, you know, I couldn't wear perfume yet. I was just too little. These are all perfumes that she wore before I was like seven, I would say, because I want to say I was about seven when I started wearing perfume. Um, so these are all like pre seven years old for me. But yeah, this is opium. This is the eau de toilette because this is what I could find in a mini of the actual, of like the vintage formulation. I feel like my mom had the eau de parfum in this one though. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was the eau de parfum. But yeah, I love, there's nothing like opium. Opium was, <laughs> was such an amazing like oriental perfume back in the eighties. Just phenomenal. Even when I was like in junior high, this was still a really popular perfume and this was something that like we still wanted to wear, but it was, it was kind of ridiculous. Like it was way above our heads, you know, way too much for us, but we still wanted to wear it. And then Calvin Klein Obsession came out and then we kind of turned our attention to all the Calvin Klein perfumes because Calvin Klein is what dominated like my junior high to high school years. Um, but yeah, opium is just, another icon and is amazing. The next one, I have a reformulated decant of this. I do not like the reformulation of this perfume, but this is Estee Lauder Cinnabar. I don't love the reformulation because the reformulation has a cat pee vibe to it that I don't like. It's got like an undertone of cat piss and I don't like that. And the original Cinnabar does not. The original Cinnabar is an absolute masterpiece. Uh, my mom used to wear that one around Christmas time. So I have like very strong nostalgic scent memories around Christmas time when I was really, really little and the smell of cinnabar. And it always reminded me of like stewed candied oranges in like with cloves and spices and all the Christmas spice and citrus yumminess. That's what the original cinnabar reminded me of. It's another masterpiece oriental the original formulation is i have come across bottles of the original formulation on ebay for quite a good price i'm just too scared to buy one because you're always taking a chance when you buy a vintage perfume like i've had some really good luck buying vintage fragrances off of ebay but i've had some really bad luck too and so i'm like really nervous to do it one of these days i'll bite the bullet and buy a bottle of it because the bottle alone is amazing that clear squarish rectangle bottle with that burnt orange lid like there's nothing like it it's amazing so anyways that is Estee Lauder Cinnabar okay now we're gonna start getting into the perfumes I tried to keep this in chronological order now we're gonna start to get into the perfumes um, and I'm not gonna put notes I'll put the names of the fragrances on the screen but I'm not gonna put notes and all that because there are way too many perfumes here to do that it would take me days to edit this um, but now we're gonna jump into perfumes that are the first perfumes that I started wearing as a kid um, the first perfume that I had as a child that was my own was Debbie Gibson Electric Youth. I will throw a picture up here. I would kill to have a bottle of that. Um, it was amazing. I, I was obsessed with Debbie Gibson. The year that I started wearing Electric Youth, my mom or my parents got me like a little aqua boom box for Christmas and her, ta her like first tape. And I wore that thing out. I played it nonstop. I was such an 80s like little kid. But um, that and I had a pair of teal Reeboks <laughs> and I thought I was the coolest thing ever. I loved them. I was, I really embraced the 80s as a child. Um, I also wore Tribute from Benetton or United Colors of Benetton. I do have a sample of that. I was not able to find my sample. I really didn't want to dig through my entire bag of samples to pull it out. I'll pop a picture up of it here too though. Tribute was the coolest perfume at the time. It was in the coolest bottle I had ever seen in my life. That perfume made me feel super grown up when I would wear it and I absolutely adored it. I thought that it was literally the best smelling thing I'd ever smelled in my life. It was so modern smelling to me at that time and it was just, and the, per, the they've put it back into production and it's not nearly the same, but it still has the essence of the original tribute and it like, 
takes me back to that six, seven year old girl. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Um, okay, the other perfume I started wearing was Samba. This is obviously a, a modern reformulation of Samba. It still smells really, really similar, but I wish they kept it in the original bottle. The original bottle was this beautiful purple bottle and then it had either a pink or maybe this color like magenta um, neck thing and it still is in the same really cool bottle. I love Samba. I think it still smells amazing to this day. This is the 80s in a bottle to me. This is the Lost Boys, Can't Buy Me Love, um, the Goonies, like this is the 80s in a bottle. And I love this and I will still wear this because this does not smell dated, not even a little bit. This still smells amazing. It's fresh. It's really modern smelling. Um, and it's really, really close to the original. I love this perfume. I loved it back then. I still love it to this day. It's so happy that I, I have even a reformulated bottle. I'm happy. Now all they have to do is re-release Debbie Gibson Electric Youth and I'll be a happy camper. Okay, I also wore exclamation. So we're talking, I was like in third and fourth grade when I was wearing these perfumes. Um, this is another one that I loved. This one didn't age quite as well as Samba. Um, I still love this, but this is not as good as what it used to be. This was phenomenal in the 80s. It was such an amazing, like, this is like 80s cheerleaders. Again, this reminds me of like Can't Buy Me Love, The Goonies, 16 Candles, The Breakfast Club, you know, all the movies. That's what this perfume reminds me of. But this is, this is like a shadow of what this used to be. Exclamation used to be amazing and it's just not anymore. It's not a bad perfume by any means. It still smells good. I would still feel very comfortable wearing this and have still worn this. It just doesn't smell to me the way that it used to. It doesn't smell like what I totally remember from the 80s, but I still love it. Um, I'm so grateful. Somebody left a comment, like a younger person, left a comment on one of my videos saying you are so lucky to have lived through the most amazing like perfume era. And I am, I'm so grateful that I was born when I was um, because I lived through two of the most amazing decades. It all went downhill after the millennial or after, you know, the new millennium or whatever. After it hit 2000, it like went downhill, but ha having lived through the 80s and 90s, I am so grateful because it really was an amazing time to be alive. So anyways, that is exclamation. Okay, and then as I got a little bit older, I really fell in love with the Charlie perfumes, but particularly Charlie White. Um, I also wore Navy by Dana. Um, that one, it was okay. Even back then, I could kind of take it or leave it. I didn't love it, but I wore it every once in a while, but Charlie White was my jam. This is an original formulation bottle as well. Um, you have to be careful if you want an original formulation of this. Um, the new formulation, I can't remember, it's got maybe a white cap on it or something. Um, this is the original formulation. This has gone off, but I can still, I can still smell it though in there. Like I can still smell its essence in this bottle. Even though it's gone off, like when I spray it, I can still smell it in there. It's off and it's funky, but I can still. I, I still get the nostalgia. And I'm just happy to have an original formulation bottle just to have the bottle because it reminds me of being a kid and it's amazing and I loved this. This to me smelled really fresh and super modern and I just loved it. So that is Charlie White. Um, we can't leave out Malibu Musk. I used to get that in the spray can from the drugstore. We had Rite Aid or what, what was it called? It was whatever Rite Aid used to be before it came, became Rite Aid. It used to be a different drugstore name and I cannot for the life of me remember. Um, bonus points if you guys ever had a six star near you. It was like kind of like a five below, but in the 80s. Um, and you could get like all kinds of crazy things there. But anyways, um, yeah, Malibu Musk in the can. Um, I used to get that. I used to get the little cans because that's all I could afford when I was, you know, seven. But I loved Malibu Musk. That's another one that they need. They really need to reconsider bringing that back out in the original formulation though. 
Okay, then this is a fragrance that my mom wore in like the late 80s, early 90s. This was more like early 90s because I think I was like in sixth or I think I was about, well, maybe fifth or sixth grade when she started wearing this, which would have been like 90, 1990, 91 time period. Um, this is called Le, Le Fleur, and this was a drugstore perfume at the time. This is an original bottle, so this has gone off. Um, it's a drugstore perfume, so it's not made with the most high quality materials in the world. I haven't like cleared the nozzle in a while though, so maybe if I cleared the nozzle, whatever came through might be like, you know, halfway decent, but this has kind of gone off. This was the most beautiful floral ever. This was the first like floral perfume that was a, very distinct floral. It wasn't like a fruity floral. It wasn't like Exclamation or Samba or Debbie Gibson Electric Youth or even Charlie White. This was more of like a floral. And it was the first kind of floral perfume that I ever wore because inevitably as I grew up, um, whatever my mom wore, inevitably I would wear. So I would take her perfumes and wear them at that point, definitely. And this was, I loved it. It's amazing. So that is Le Fleur. And this is from Cody. It was, it was just a drugstore perfume. Um, then sixth grade hit and Calvin Klein became all the rage. And this was the first one that really became all the rage. This is Calvin Klein Escape. And this is one of the most nostalgic smells to me in the world too. This is up there. This is almost up there with poison because it's so, like it had such a huge impact on me and my like perfume life. It's one of the most nostalgic smelling things in the world to me. Everybody and their mother wore this, everybody. Everybody was wearing Calvin Klein. It was either shortly after Escape or shortly uh, before Escape that Eternity came out. And you wanna talk about all the rage. Everybody wore Eternity, everybody. If you were a female, you wore Eternity for women. If you were male, you wore Eternity for, man, for men. Um, we were all in junior high wearing these grown ass adult fragrances. Like we loved Calvin Klein like no other. I mean, we were like toting our Esprit bags with our hyper, hyper color t-shirts, like with our slap band wrist, you know, bracelets, smelling like grown ass adults in eternity and escape. We loved it. Calvin Klein was it. Like you couldn't tell us anything else. Calvin Klein was it. So that is Eternity. This is another one that is so nostalgic for me, but I was more of an escape girl. Um, I liked Eternity, but my best friend at the time wore this, and so I kind of stayed away from this one and I leaned more towards escape, but loved them both. And then getting more into kind of junior high-ish area. I think this was more like seventh grade, seventh and eighth grade when this came out. This is Fire and Ice from Revlon. Um, so not only did I love the perfume, and this is like a drugstore perfume too, but it was so good. And this one still is, this is the original formulation. This is vintage and it still smells incredible. You guys, I can still wear this and it smells fresh as a daisy, like seriously. It's such an amazing fragrance. Um, so I would wear the perfume and then I would use the hair products. The Revlon Outrageous hair products were fire and ice. That was the smell, Fire and Ice. So I would use the hair products and then I would put on the perfume and I was just like walking Fire and Ice. I loved it. I thought I smelled amazing. I mean, I thought I smelled like the coolest thing ever. It was, you know, I just smelled amazing. I thought I smelled super grown up. Um, this was like after Calvin Klein, you know, the luster had kind of worn off a bit with Calvin Klein before it came back with CK1, which we'll talk about in a bit, in a minute. But yeah, this was the in-between phase for me and I loved it. So that is Revlon Fire and Ice. Okay, we also had some random perfumes. Ralph Lauren Safari. It was, I can't really place this one in a time period, but I remember loving this. I think I maybe smelled this in a magazine or something and I loved it. I never owned it back then, but when I got older, I found a vintage bottle of this. I think I found this bottle on Mercari and I snatched it up because this is a vintage bottle of Safari and it's gorgeous and I think the bottle is absolutely stunning. It's like cut crystal with, it looks like, it's not sterling silver obviously, but it looks like a sterling silver lid. It just looks very expensive. It smells incredible. I adore this. Um, this came out, I think, like maybe later middle school for me. 
And then in middle school, my best friend at the time, she wore Sun, Moon, and Stars. I This came back into production as well. I picked up a sample of this just to see if it still, if it still smelled like Sun, Moon, and Stars. It doesn't smell 100% like what it used to smell like, but, and they've changed the bottle a bit. Like the, the blue bottle with the Sun, Moon, and Stars on it is still awesome. And this was a Carl Lagerfeld fragrance back then. This is now United Colors and Prestige Beauty. Um, this came back out about when they came back out with Tribute. Um, but yeah, it used to have a gold lid and now they've changed it to silver. So um, yeah, but it is still a very nostalgic smell to me because it just reminds me of being in like late middle school with this one too. Um, super nostalgic scent. So that is Sun, Moon, and Stars. Okay, and then we're gonna start to get into high school. Um, in high school, we had Izzy Miyake. This is, an, this is a phenomenal fragrance. This is a perfume that I still wear to this day. What, 25 years later? Yeah, 25, 26 years later, I still wear Izzy Miyake. I never wore this back then, um, but I loved it. It was a phenomenal perfume, still is. Very, very nostalgic smelling for me. Um, my jam was Cool Water. So I wore David off Cool Water. I loved the men's version of Cool Water back then. All the boys wore the men's version of Cool Water and they all smelled amazing. Um, and so when they released the women's version of Cool Water, I was all over it. I was one of the first people to purchase this and start wearing it. It was my favorite. I wore this for a couple of years like religiously and that was back so when i was a kid i would have a collection of like i don't know between seven and ten perfumes at all times that i would like rotate through but once i got to like middle school high school i started being more of like a signature scent kind of girl so i would wear the same perfume every single day and that was really popular back then there there was like a time period kind of in the 90s where you just had a signature scent um and this became my signature scent. I loved it then. I still love this today. This is one of my daughter's favorite perfumes. In fact, she keeps this with her because she wears this all of the time. She loves it. And so do I. It still smells phenomenal. It's like a sweet, rich, aquatic fragrance. And it's amazing. So that is David off Cool Water. Another fragrance from my high school years is Givenchy Amarige. This is... One of the most nostalgic smells to me in the world too. This is right up there with Escape and Poison. It's such an amazing smell. I remember um, there was a group, we had like a ninth grade dance and there was a group of us girls that like um, all got ready together and like we were meeting whoever we were going to the dance with at the dance and me and my best friend at the time and I think another girl we all three got ready together and my best friend at the time, I'm pretty sure this is the fragrance that she wore. It's, and I'll never forget. I mean, it's just such an amazing fragrance. So many girls in high school wore this though, so I never wore it because I would never wear fragrances that other people were wearing. But this is so nostalgic smelling to me and I thought that it was the most phenomenal floral like I had ever smelled when this one, um, when I, you know, I don't remember when this came out, but I just remember when I started smelling it on everybody thinking it was so amazing, but that I wouldn't wear it because too many people were wearing it. So yeah, G uh, Givenchy Amarige is such a nostalgic smell for me and I love, I adore this perfume to this day. I still wear this. Okay, <laughs> then we have Calvin Klein CK1. Um, so Cal the Calvin Klein hype died off for a little bit, but when CK1 hit when I was in high school, it was on again. Everybody wore CK1. This was one of the first fragrances that was marketed to both men and women. Um, it was marketed to us like teenagers that everybody could wear it, and we did. Everybody wore this. Uh, you know, boys and girls wore this. It's such an amazing scent. Even to this day, this is iconic. It is so nostalgic smelling to me. I mean, I can't even stand it. It's right up there again with Escape, Eternity, Poison, all of those. This has a huge like place in my fragrance memory. Um, it's a good one. And this has stood the test of time. This is a phenomenal fragrance, even to this day. 
So that is CK1. Also in high school, I had a friend who wore Vanilla Fields. I loved this, but I wouldn't wear it because she wore it. This is a vintage bottle. It's amazing. It's just an amazing vanil vanilla scent. It's a very rich, deep, perfumey vanilla. I love it. This vintage bottle still smells phenomenal too. Like this just, again, this is a testament to how good perfumes used to be. This was a drugstore perfume and this is, I mean, there's no telling how old this is, 25 years old maybe this bottle and it still smells perfect because perfume was just so much better quality back then. But yeah, Vanilla Fields is phenomenal. The new formulation of this cannot hold a candlestick to the old. Um, it was so good. So that is Vanilla Fields. Then we have Angel. Um, I just have a little mini of the original Angel. This is another one that I would never wear because it was too popular. Everybody wore this perfume. Um, I keep this mini. I love this mini. It smells so good. This is an old mini too. This is from like the early 2000s. So this is an old really good formulation mini. The liquid has fully turned dark green. Um, it's so good. I love this. Such a nostalgic scent as well. This is as nostalgic as poison. It's as iconic as poison. I mean, it's so good. And I keep the mini because just for nostalgia reasons, really. Um, so that is Mugler Angel. So after, as soon as this for perfume came out, this is Ralph Lauren Polo Sport for women. This came out when I was in, I want to say like 11th grade or something. Maybe even, I may have even been a senior. No, I think I wore this when I was in 11th grade. So as soon as this came out, I stopped wearing cool water for women and this became my new signature. I don't know why when I was in high school, I was super into like sporty, aquatic scents and which was the furthest thing from me. I was never a sporty person. Um, it was, I, you know, that was the furthest thing from who I was, but I loved these like sporty aquatic smelling scents. This was amazing. I loved Ralph Lauren Polo Sport. It smells so good. It's another kind of sweet, fresh, aquatic smelling perfume. Very sporty smelling. I loved it though. It's amazing. I went through bottles and bottles of this and it was quite expensive. This is an original formulation vintage bottle of this. Um, it was very expensive for me to get, but I had to have it. This has gone off. You can spray it on and when it gets to the deep dry down, it will still smell like the original. You know, you'll, it still smells good, but like the top notes are all gone and it just smells really funky when you first spray it, but I can still smell it though. And it's, it's just amazing. It's so nostalgic for me. It brings back so many memories of high school, which I hated. I dreaded high school. I hated it, but yeah. So that was Ralph Lauren Polo Sport. And then the year that I graduated high school, I started wearing Tommy Girl from Tommy Hilfiger. This was like all the rage. Everybody was wearing this perfume. The only reason I wore it was because somebody got me a big bottle as a gift. And I loved how it smelled. I thought it smelled amazing. And it still does. This is a perfume that still smells incredible. This is an old bottle. It's an old little tiny bottle. It's like, it's, it hasn't gone completely off, but it's like right on the edge of going off. But I can still smell it. I just keep it for nostalgic purposes and that's it. I don't ever wear this one. Not that I wouldn't. I would totally rock Tommy Girl. I think it still smells amazing to this day. It's another one that has totally stood the test of time. But yeah, I wore this. I just had the one bottle because it was a gift. I wore it until that bottle was gone and then I didn't repurchase it. So that was Tommy Girl. And then right, it was right around that time too that I discovered DKNY um, women. So <laughs> I was working in a department store. It was called the Bon Marche back then, which is now Macy's. Um, the Bon Marche was basically like the Pacific Northwest's Macy's. They just call, didn't call it Macy's for some reason. Um, but I was working there at the time and this was like, the hottest perfume of the season when I was working there and everybody and their mother wore this perfume and I started hanging out with a girl whose husband was in the military and we started hanging out like a ton and then a third girl that I worked I in fact I can't remember I don't think she worked in the same department as me but we just became like really good friends and 
I only lived there, this was back home when I had lived, it was like in between my two stints in California, right after I lived in Malibu. When I moved back home from Malibu for six months, this that's when I discovered this perfume. Um, this perfume is like, meh. It's kind of, it's nostalgic, but kind of in a good way and kind of in a bad way. Um, that was not the best time for me. That six months that I had moved back home was not the best time for me at all. Like mentally, I was not very well. Um, it was just a really difficult, dark time for me. So this perfume, it's like, I love it because I, the nostalgia of it is amazing and it's just an amazing perfume. It's got the most beautiful, fresh tomato leaf note in it and I love it. Um, but at the same time, it's also like, oof, it reminds me of those really hard times. So yeah, this is nostalgic in kind of a good way and kind of a bad way. Okay, um, another perfume that, this is gonna be a stand-in for that because this smells exactly like it, but it's not the actual perfume. This is Sultan Ore from Pascal Morabito, but this smells exactly like the original formulation of Lancome Poem. It's so good. Now this is a good nostalgia for me because I, I also made, I made so many friends at that department store when I worked there. And one of the girls that I made friends with was this sweet girl that worked in the men's department. And um, she, Lancome Poem was her signature scent. It had been out for some years by then. It was such a grown up scent. And I just thought she was so cool because she wore this really, really grown up perfume. You know, I was like 19 and I thought that the, it was such an amazing like grown up smell. And I love it. It is one of the most beautiful perfumes ever made. Lancome Poem is, an, is a masterpiece in my opinion. It's gorgeous. And the fact that they're still making perfumes that smell like that, I mean, it just shows you. It's one that stands the test of time. It's phenomenal. So that is Lancome Poem or Sultan, no Sultan Or standing in for Lancome Poem. Then I got into Lolita Lempica. I have no idea what perfume I was wearing when I moved back down to California for the second time. I want to say I maybe was still working through that huge bottle of Tommy Girl because it was a huge bottle. Um, I was probably wearing something else too, but I can't totally remember. Um, but when I very first moved out to South Carolina, I found a bottle of Lolita Lempica at a TJ Maxx and I snatched it up because it was such a good price and I loved Lolita Lempica. Um, I think I had had maybe a mini or something before because that wasn't my first bottle, but it was the first full bottle of it that I had. And this I think is the gateway perfume for me that took me from like my old kind of childhood perfumes into my newer, less juvenile, like adult perfume life. This was the gateway fragrance for me, for sure. Um, so this is, this holds a huge place in my heart. It will always be a very nostalgic smell for me and it will always be in my collection because it's an amazing scent. Um, it is like the first scent that I wore that I felt very grown up, like very grown up. So that is Lolita Lampica. I told you I had a ton of perfumes, you guys, and we're only halfway through, so. <laughs> After Lolita Lempica, I that's when Stella McCartney Stella came out. Um, I saw this advertised in a magazine, like, the same month that it was released, and I ran my butt to, I had to drive all the way up to Charlotte, um, because that was the closest, I'm pretty, yeah, Charlotte is, was the closest Sephora. So my mom and I drove all the way up to Charlotte and I bought a bottle of Stella McCartney. Um, and I'm not gonna talk too much about this one because if you have followed me for any time at all, you guys know what Stella is to me. This is one of my favorite perfumes of all time. I think this is an absolute masterpiece. To me, this is the best rose perfume in existence. I absolutely love it. You wanna talk about feeling grown up. This, unfortunately, this is not the original formulation. This is the reformulation. It still smells amazing, it's just not quite as deep and it doesn't last as long, but it still smells phenomenal and I loved everything about this perfume. Um, this was my first real, like, gr I'm a grown up, like, I've made it to adulthood. I think I was like 22, yeah, I'm pretty sure I was 22 when this came out um, and this was it for me. This was like, 
the classiest thing I'd ever smelled in my life and this was all I wanted to smell like for years. <laughs> I went through bottles and bottles of this perfume um, and that original bottle was so cool and yeah, I loved it. So that is Stella. After Stella, so I went through this phase where I was like, I need to start feeling young again. Like, I think you go through this phase when you're in your kind of early to mid twenties where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm already like 24, 25 years old and I'm, I'm having like a midlife crisis because I'm starting to feel like I'm getting old. That's when my midlife crisis happened, when I was like in my early to mid twenties. Um, I haven't had a problem with any other age since then. Like I didn't have a problem turning 30. I didn't have a problem turning 40. Um, you know, I have not had any kind of a midlife crisis. So I think that was it for me. And that mostly happened with me with perfume. And the perfumes that I started wearing after Stella was this one here. This is Moschino I Love Love. This is another one I ran to Sephora. And when this first came out, and I had to have it, it was amazing. It was so fresh and so completely different from, from Stella that I bought a bottle of this. Um, I only ever went through one bottle of this because I eventually ended up going back to Stella because I missed her so much and I couldn't stay away for that long. So yeah, I wore this and it pretty much got me through like one summer and then that was it. Um, this is an amazing perfume. It is one of my favorites, and I think that this is gonna stand the test of time, absolutely. Um, right around that time, this is a fragrance that I have loved this forever, but I never owned a bottle of it back then because it was too expensive for me. Um, this is Fresh Brown Sugar, and this is another one. I used to smell this every time I would go into Sephora, and I loved it. I was absolutely in love with this fragrance, but I could not afford it because this was really expensive. I don't think that it was any more expensive than Stella, but I don't know, like I was not willing to pay what they wanted, like the price for this, but I was totally willing to pay it for, for Stella. I guess because I felt like Stella was so much more, you know, I don't know, elevated. And this is a gorgeous perfume, don't get me wrong, but it's not worth like hundreds of dollars, not at all. I don't think it's even worth $100. And I don't think it's priced like that anymore. Like I think you can get these much more reasonably than you could back then. But yeah, Fresh Brown Sugar is yummy. It's like a sweet, yummy, sugared lemon fragrance. I absolutely adore this one. Um, so this is in the Stella time period as well. And then I also, so after I wore I Love Love, and went back to Stella for a while. I started feeling like I needed some to smell like a juvenile again. So I started wearing Britney Spears Fantasy. This is Fantasy Stage Edition. Um, I don't have my original bottle anymore, but this is the original formulation. And I loved this. This smells like kiwis, it smells like kiwi cupcakes. It's sweet and sugary and yummy and juvenile smelling and it made me feel young again even though I was still incredibly young, like I was losing my mind. But yeah, it just made me feel super young again. So I wore this for a little bit, maybe like a few months, um, maybe like six months, I don't know. I would still go back and forth between this and Stella. Um, it was just, it was a phase. She was a phase. Okay, and then after Britney Spears, um, and I was still wearing, I was still wearing Stella mostly, like exclusively. Um, I started working with this girl. She was a little bit younger than me. This was when I was an assistant manager at Starbucks. And she wore this perfume right here. This is Calvin Klein Euphoria. So we're bringing it back to Calvin Klein who's been there. Calvin Klein has been solid like my whole life. Um, this reminded me, for whatever reason, it reminded me of my mom's Cinnabar days. Um, the original formulation of Calvin Klein Euphoria is phenomenal. This sadly is the reformulation. I wish to God I still had my original formulation. This is an amazing perfume. The reformulated version though does it no justice. The original formulation was gorgeous. It was another one of those gorgeous, deep, kind of oriental style perfumes. Phenomenal. This one is, it's like a watery, kind of slightly fruity version of what Euphoria used to be. But yeah, I immediately bought a bottle and started wearing Euphoria um, because it reminded me of 
my mom, like it reminded, it was the first perfume, like modern perfume that was, that reminded me of the old vintage 80s style perfumes. And I fell in love with this hard and fast and I wore this for a couple of years. I wore this definitely for a good couple of years. I went through a couple bottles of it. Um, and I wish I still had an original formulation bottle. You know what? I may go searching for a bottle of the original formulation because it's not so old that I would be super nervous that it would be completely off. So yeah, I need to hunt one down. So that is Calvin Klein Euphoria. This, this next one, so this is another placeholder perfume. So another super nostalgic perfume that I never wore because it was so popular I, that I would have never worn it is Ralph Lauren Ralph. Um, that was when I was finishing up college. I had only been out here in South Carolina for a couple of years. I was finishing up uh, college and everybody and their mother, I don't know if, if any of you out there remember the Ralph Lauren and New Balance phase where everybody, men, women, everybody wore those ugly, old man looking New Balance shoes and you could get them in any color and every female around wore Ralph Lauren uh, Ralph. And I've got the Paris Hilton, the original Paris Hilton perfume, which I think came out probably not too long after Ralph, but this smells just like Ralph Lauren Ralph. And it's such a nostalgic smell for me because every girl that I went to school with wore Ralph. Like, you couldn't go anywhere. You could, I mean, you would go to the mall and every store in the mall smelled like Ralph because it was just everywhere. It was like the most popular perfume ever. I didn't wear it because, you know, I was busy with Stella, my, the other perfumes that I was into. But yeah, that is a very nostalgic smell for me. Okay, also right around that time, um, I started wearing La Vanilla Pure Vanilla. This was, so I started wearing this perfume when I started waking up about food and how bad our food was and all the chemicals in our food and just the quality of food in general when I had an awakening when it came to health and wellness. Um, that was about in the mid 2000s and that's when I started looking for cleaner options. That's also when I started looking for natural deodorants, which it was still a few years before I switched over fully to natural deodorants, but La Vanilla made natural deodorants and they also made clean fragrances. So um, when I first went deep down that rabbit hole, this was, I picked this perfume up because um, I wanted cleaner options and this was one. This is a perfume that will, it holds such a dear place in my heart. It's such an amazing vanilla, like complex perfumey vanilla, and it's it's just amazing. It's so good, I love this one. I've had a bottle of this in my collection for years, years and years. There was a time where I decluttered a bottle and sold it, but six months later I bought it again because I can't live without it. It's phenomenal um, and very, very nostalgic for me. So that is La Vanilla Pure Vanilla. It also, um, it also is a symbol of a really, really what I think was important part of life and becoming an adult, really. Okay, we also, all in the same time period, um, DKNYB Delicious came out. This came out, I wanna say right after Stella came out or right around that time period because the, when I would go up to Charlotte to buy Stella, this is what Sephora smelled like. Every, like you would walk into the mall and the entire mall smelled like Be Delicious because every department store was spraying this, like Sephora smelled like this, everybody smelled like Be Delicious and I absolutely adore this fragrance. I think it is so good. It's such a nostalgic smell for me. I remember how popular this was. This is another one that I would not even touch because it was, everybody was wearing it. But I love this one and I will wear it now because it's phenomenal. But this is more of like a fall scent for me. I just think it's so good in the fall. It's like a perfumey kind of apple type scent. I love it, it's so good. So that is DKNY Be Delicious. Okay, and then it, you know, during that same time period, um, Miss Dior Cherie from Dior came out. This is another one that everybody wore Miss Dior Cherie. Um, it was like, I don't know, for me, this is kind of the gateway from kind of older Dior into new modern Dior. This is the kind of gateway perfume. Um, 
it's just, it's so good. This was, I don't know, there's something about that caramel popcorn and strawberry combination that is just so good. But everybody and their mother wore this too. This is another one that I did not wear because everybody was wearing this. But it's such a nostalgic fragrance and I love it. There's nothing else like this out there. There are lots of dupes, like, in fact, um, Soap and Glory have a whole bunch of products or had a whole bunch of products that smell like this, but yeah, it's just a good one and very, very nostalgic in my perfume journey. Another very nostalgic perfume for me is Hypnotic Poison. So I wear, started wearing Hypnotic Poison in about 2007, 2008, somewhere in there. It was after um, I had kind of well, this was what I wore after kind of Stella and um, I Love Love and Euphoria and all of those fragrances. I moved on to Dior Hypnotic Poison and I loved it. This is a very nostalgic scent for me. This is, this smell is, I don't know, it, it reminds me of a very specific time in my life. This was when I was a store manager for Starbucks. I was living by myself. Um, like I was really adulting for the first time. Um, you know, nobody was helping me, helping me with my bills. I had like a serious grown up job. Um, I had finished college, so I had a degree and this was the perfume that was there through all of that. And, um, I was going to see Muse and concert a ton when I was wearing this. So this reminds me of those days. Um, I, this is the perfume that I, wore when I met my husband. So I wore this the first couple years that I was married. Um, it's just been through a lot with me. So this has a very, very special place in my heart and this will always be a very nostalgic perfume for me. Um, the one that I wore, it wasn't the newest formulation, but it wasn't this first formulation either. It was an in-between version and it was an absolute monster. So it was before they completely butchered it. But yeah, I love this. It'll always, I'll always have this in my collection. Um, at the same time I wore Hypnotic Poison, I also wore Scotta Moon Sparkle. This was another TJ Maxx find. Um, I had no, I blind bought this in TJ Maxx. I just saw it and I loved the bottle. I thought the bottle was stunning. And I don't know, I just blind bought it, took a chance with it and I ended up loving it. This was my going out perfume though, because I used to go out partying a lot in those days. And um, because all I did was work and hang out with my friends, like I had no responsibility. I didn't have to be anywhere and do anything. So I just did whatever I wanted all the time. Um, and this was the perfume that I would wear when I would go out and I loved it. That's a very nostalgic smell for me as well. And then after all of that, um, Things took a turn, like took a downturn for me when it came to perfume because I felt like it was around that time, like the 2012-ish time, that for me, perfume took a serious nose nosedive. Um, I felt like everything that was being released around that time was trash. I was really, really put off and really disappointed in perfumery like right around that time. I hadn't discovered niche yet at all. So I was really just disappointed with like, I don't know, um, another perfume I, I should have pulled but didn't that I wore right around this time too was um, Philosophy Falling in Love. I used to wear Philosophy Falling in Love a lot as well. I loved that perfume. I just thought it was so dreamy and beautiful. Um, and I went through a bottle of that as well, probably in somewhere between 2005 and 2007, probably. Um, and part of the perfume downfall for me was this fra fragrance right, right here. When Prada Candy was released, I loved the way that it smelled, but this was when perfume started performing really, really terribly. And it was very disheartening for me. So this was one of those fragrances that really kind of I don't know, took the wind out of my sails when it came to perfume. I started becoming very disheartened with the whole of perfumery. That and then everybody was going crazy over that Lady Gaga perfume that had the black liquid and supposedly had belladonna in it. And 
I thought the whole thing was so super lame um, that that was another perfume. That and Prada Candy together just really turned me off perfume for a while. So there were a couple years in there where I just, I was wearing what I had. Um, I wasn't seeking out anything new and I wasn't excited by anything. I will tell you what perfume got me excited about perfume again though is this one right here. Um, Marc Jacobs Decadence. This came out in 2014 and for the longest I thought this came out way before then but it didn't. It came out in 2014 and when this perfume came back out or came out I didn't blind buy a bottle of it. I found somebody on eBay that was making decants of it and I bought a huge decant of it like a 10 mil decant and I fell hard in love again with perfume. Um, so this right here is so nostalgic and so special for me because this is what brought back my like passion for perfume. Um, it wasn't long after this that I discovered niche perfumery as well. And then golly, it's been a snowball from there. It was all over after that for me because there, when I discovered niche, it just opened up this whole other world for me. But Marc Jacobs Decadence will always be in my collection and I will always hold a very special place in my heart because this is what brought me back. Um, this is the perfume that brought me back. And because this has a very specific scent memory for me as well, this reminds me of some kind of potpourri that my mom used to put in our house in the 80s. And it somehow reminds me of JCPenney at Christmas time in the 80s. And it somehow reminds me of the Drew Barrymore, Keanu Reeves, Babes in Toyland movie, if you guys remember that from the 80s. I love it so much. This is another just gorgeous, gorgeous perfume. So thank you to Marc Jacobs for bringing me back around. Another perfume that came, around, came out right around that time that I also really loved, I wasn't super, super impressed with it, but I really loved it and it brought me back around to perfume, was Elizabeth and James Nirvana. Um, this is like vanilla and oak and something else. It's very simple, but I love this. It's, it was just another really good perfume that I thought was really, really nice. And it lasts really well, and it just, it brought, my, brought back my faith and my passion for perfume. So that is Elizabeth and James Nirvana. Ooh, this has been a long one. Um, no, oh, I know, yes, in between, this is the perfume, sorry. This one should have come before Decadence. I think this one should have come before Decadence. Um, this is a perfume that I discovered. I got minis of it first. I had minis of it first. Um, I bought like a little set off of fragrance net that was a bunch of minis. And this was one of those in-between perfumes when I was just really not feeling perfume anymore because I was just really disappointed by everything that was coming out. That's when I discovered Chloe and I fell in love with Chloe. I just thought that this was so gorgeous. It was very different smelling and I just thought that this was absolutely stunning. And yeah, this one didn't like rekindle my passion for perfume. Not, not in the way that Decadence did, but this is what kind of tided me over, or this is what kind of held me over until I came back around. So that is Chloe. This is another perfume that kind of held me over as well. So now we're kind of talking about in-between perfumes, in-between like when I had a, took a little couple year hiatus from fragrance because I was really just disappointed. Um, Lush Vanillary, this also held me over. Lush perfumes in general, I was super impressed with most of them. I loved them. I thought they were super unique smelling. They are very rich and decadent smelling perfumes. And But I love Vanillary. This is a very nostalgic smell for me because I started, um, I started wearing Vanillary I think in like 2010 because I remember when they, when they first released perfumes, I got a discovery set of every perfume that they released and they released a bunch at first. Like... I don't want, I want to say six or eight perfumes, like out of the gate. And I've been obsessed with Vanillary ever since. I love it. Um, so yeah, this one was another one that I kind of wore in my in-between phase. And then I discovered Niche, and this is gonna be the end of this journey. Um, because after I discovered Niche, it was like I said, like a snowball. And I the way that I got into Niche was through Sephora, really, because that's where I would buy most of my perfume was Sephora. And Sephora started carrying some really cool, unique brands. Um, the first 
two niche brands that I ever was exposed to and that I bought anything from was Histoire de Parfums. Um, I have a degree in history, so when I saw this line of perfumes, I was completely blown away by it. I loved the idea of Histoire de Parfums. Um, I've got Ombre 114 here. I absolutely adore this one. They just make phenomenal fragrances. I love this house. And then the other niche house, and I got a discovery set. Um, I got discovery sets of both of these and fell head over heels in love with both houses. Um, the other house that I got a discovery set from was Etat Libre d'Orange, and I fell in love with this house too. This was, that was before this perfume came out. This was like this. Um, this was back when they only had like, uh, they had quite a few fragrances. They had, I think, um, they had like 1969. I No, what am I thinking of? They had, I can't remember all of the fragrances that came in that discovery set, but I want to say it was like Fat Electrician. Um, I can't remember. There was like eight fragrances in that discovery set and I fell in love with all of them. So these are very nostalgic niche houses for me because these were my first kind of niche um, fragrances, the first houses that I fell in love with that got me interested in niche. And that is going to be it guys. Holy cow. If you sat through this entire thing, thank you for sticking with me. Those are, but I knew if I was going to sit down and do a nostalgic video, we're going to do it because I've got so many. I keep nostalgic fragrances in my collection because I love to smell them. I love smelling nostalgic perfumes. They're my favorite thing in the entire world, especially the ones from my childhood. So anyways, you guys, I would love to hear your nostalgic fragrances. What fragrances just take you somewhere when you smell them? What do you keep in your collection just strictly for nostalgic reasons? I would love to hear in the comments down below. I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.